All right, guys, so uh, we're at Alpha's house right now, and I have Alpha recording for me. Um, we're going to Locals. Locals hasn't started yet, but I'm basically already coming first place. So uh, this is a first place deck profile, um, going to be first place deck profile. But uh, in today's Locals, or in today's video, I should say, we're showing off Crusadia. And I'm really excited because I haven't played Crusadia in a while, and this is a pure going second OTK build. Now, if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure to like and subscribe, as always. All right, let's get right into it, though. We are playing three Maximus, of course. You need to be playing three of this, uh, one of your best starter cards for the deck. Uh, you have to play playing three of basically all the names because you really want to see it, right? So three Arborea, of course. This card is really good. The protection is really important. Three Draco, one of the best extenders in the deck. You're playing three Reclusia, and then we're only playing two of the Leonis. Leonis is probably one of the worst ones because it does piercing damage, which is kind of okay, but it's not the best. So that's why we're just playing the two. Uh, but you have to be playing all these names because you need to see, in theory, like if you see two names, you're pretty much good to go. Or if you don't see a name, you can see this card, which is like an honorary name, which is three parallel exceed. Uh, I like this card even in the going second builds. Going first, of course, you know how powerful this card is, but going second, this is pretty good as well because it gives you access to a bunch of link monsters, gives you access to a rank four monster that we're playing that I'm going to show you guys what it is later because uh, it's kind of spicy. It's something that you don't often see in Crusadia, but I thought it'd be uh, kind of interesting to do. So we're going to try it out today. But yeah, so the Parallel Exceed. And then for the last of the Crusadia cards, I'm just going to do all the Crusadia stuff together. We're playing one Revival, one Power, and one Testament. Uh, these cards are all really good. Uh, power makes it so that your monsters are unaffected. Testament makes it... Well, there's two effects for this. The one that I'm, you're mainly going to be using is the one where if you activate this, your opponent cannot respond to Crusadia effects. The other one is you get to draw cards, something about that, like when you attack and you don't OTK. But we want to be OTKing anyway, so you're not going to be using that. This card helps you because it lets all your Crusadia monsters attack all monsters on the field, I believe. And it gives them 500 attack, there you go. So uh, this card's really good. Um, so yeah, that's it for the Crusadia stuff. Obviously Parallel Exceeds not a Crusadia card, but it's essentially a Crusadia card. So that's why we're playing the Exceeds and then all these beautiful names here. Oh, the one thing I will actually mention, I wanna say this, with Power and Reclusia, there's kind of like a really cool combo where if you have like, let's say your Link 1 up right here. So let, let me just show it to you guys because I think it's really cool. It's not really much of a combo, as much of a combo as it is just like, a cool interaction. So if you go at summon Magius and then summon the Reclusia, right? And then let's say you activate Reclusia to pop a card you control and a card your opponent controls. What you can do is you can target your Magius and target a card your opponent controls. Then you can chain the power if you have this in your hand, targeting the Magius. So essentially the Magius is unaffected by card effects except its own. And then you get to pop the opponent's card, but you get to keep the Magius. So that's kind of cool. So uh, that's just kind of like a cool interaction that you guys can sometimes do. And it just really is powerful sometimes. And then for the Go Second and the Board Breaker cards, we're playing a lot of them. Again, we want to OTK. We're playing three Yamasil. Kaijus, of course, uh, are always good against uh, anything, really, especially in today's format, against Koshara. But it's also really good because it synergizes really well with Equimax and some of the Crusadia cards. So that's why we're playing the Kaijus. We're playing five in total. I think this is all you need. We're not actually playing a Slumber. The reason we're not playing Slumber is because there's other board breakers in this deck that you can play. And if you think about it, Slumber is basically Dark Hole that can be Ash. So at that point, you might as well just play Dark Hole. Yes, it puts these on your field, but it doesn't really matter if these are on your field or not, right? So um, you really just want to be using this to break the boards. And then we're playing more board breakers or more, I guess, hand traps, you could say. We're playing three Nibiru, of course, three Ash Blossom, as well as three Imperm. So these are just the most generic hand traps, I think, this format, the most powerful ones. Uh, Ash and Imperm are really good because they're good into essentially everything. Nib is really good into Kosh specifically. It's not super great into stuff like uh, Flounderies. Uh, it's not really good into stuff like Sprite because it can lock you out of using the Nibiru. But it's not bad into Sword Soul either because even if they set up a Baron, and you activate this, you're getting rid of the Baron Negate at least. So th there's that, which is really powerful, right? So these cards, I think, are all really relevant. We're not playing uh, Book of Eclipse or Book of Moon or anything like that, because again, we want to be able to OTK. And yes, Book of Eclipse is really good. It's just more like if you put your opponent's monsters in defense position, you have to do this weird route where you have to get to Leonis, and then Leonis has to be able to pierce and all that kind of stuff, or Equimax has to be able to pierce using the Leonis. So I didn't want to go through all that shenanigans. I just decided to play all these board breakers here, which I just felt like were really powerful. So I don't know how many in total I think there are. I think there's like 12 or something like that. Uh, we're playing two Desires, of course, for draw power. And then we're playing two TTT. TTT is really good, of course, to draw you more cards if you need to. It can be used as a change of heart, which we're also playing one change of heart. Uh, this, this is also just really powerful in so many different ways. It's always gonna be relevant in today's format, so it's really nice in that sense. And then we're playing the one Harpy's Feather Duster. Of course, we wanna be able to deal with back row in the main deck. We have side deck hate for back row, but we wanna have something at least in the main deck for this. And then lastly, the 41st card of the deck. So this card is, or this deck I should say is 41 cards in the main deck, and it's the spicy double or nothing. 
Um, so this is a card that I was talking about earlier. Uh, this card gets you into your Utopia double into your extra deck, which makes it so that if you don't have the OTK with like Equimax, then uh, you can go Utopia double. Now keep in mind, don't summon the Utopia double to an arrow that Equimax points to because it cannot attack. So don't do that. All right, that's all I wanted to say because uh, yeah, so if you do that, you just misplay and you just lose. So you don't want to do that. But uh, the double or nothing is a really good second option for your OTK if they stop your Crusadia plays. So that's it for the main deck. It's 41 cards in the main deck. And uh, I think it's really powerful. I think it's really consistent. Then we'll move on to the extra deck over here. All right, so if you guys have made it this far into the video, first of all, respect, you guys are five minutes in, that's crazy. But the second thing that I wanna say is I'm gonna give you guys a quick update as to what happened at the locals. So we actually came third place. We went X1 on the day, but our first loss was actually in our first round against Koshtara. And then we ended up playing Flu, Trap Tricks, and then Sword Soul, and then we went 3-0 the rest of the day. But because we lost in round one, we couldn't finish first or second. So we finished third place, X1 with this. I'm, I'm pretty excited, I'm pretty happy with it i would say it's not bad there's nothing really i would change from the deck because i thought it was just super consistent super functional i just didn't see the cards to break the cost to boards but that's okay it happens sometimes so let's get right back into the deck profile we're playing three magius of course you need to be playing three of this it's your starter it's one of the best cards in your deck we're playing two regulus as well as two crusadia equimax so i think these are just the best ratios for the crusadia monsters that you need to be playing you need to at least be playing two and two because it's good in the mid to late game. You don't really want to get to a mid to late game, but it's really good to be playing two and two because you don't want to get one of them ripped out and then you don't have them for your OTK, right? So that's why you have to be playing two and two. And then for the one ofs, we're playing IP Mascarena, Unicorn. These are all cards that you can sometimes go into when either you're forced to go first or somehow you don't have the OTK. You can end on IP, Unicorn, Apple is a card that you can end on a lot. Avermax is a really powerful card in today's format. So that's why I'm playing the Avermax. It just kind of like you can IP into this sometimes, which is really nice. Access code sometimes can help you OTK. Parallel Exceed makes it so that access code becomes really easy to make because Parallel Exceed can go into stuff like your IP or into your Unicorn and then eventually climb all the way up to this. So that's why I like playing the Exceed in the main deck, even though that we're going second, it's still really important. So these are just all like options if you don't OTK, but essentially you should be OTKing. And then lastly, for the last three cards in the extra deck, we're playing one Baguska. A lot of the times, if you are forced to go first or you don't have a way to game your opponent, you can kind of end on a board like this. So it makes it so that, you know, you have a Baguska that stops your opponent, but then this is also going to be boosted by the Baguska. So it's kind of nice in that sense. And uh, it's just one of those cards that's really powerful into a lot of decks. And then lastly, we're playing Utopia Double. And Utopia, of course, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. We're playing Double or Nothing. And it's just another OTK card for you, another option for you. So that's it for the extra deck, 15 cards. There's me. Yeah, anyways. Um, then we're playing the scuffed side deck over here. The side deck I think is actually not bad, but it's kind of scuffed. You guys will see in a second. But we're playing three Lightning Storm, of course, when you're going second against backward decks, you really want to be playing this. This is really good into trap tricks and whatnot because a lot of the trap hole cards don't really do anything if you just pop them before you have to summon anything. So I, I did like playing that for the back row hate. And then we're also playing uh, Cyclone. And uh, this should be, I guess, Giant Trunade. I just don't have Giant Trunade. Not Giant Trunade, that card's banned. Uh, what's the card? What's the Trunade card called? Hey Trunade. Hey Trunade, there you go. Yeah, Hey Trunade's pretty good into Trap Trick as well. That's the deck that I was worried about the most. Labyrinth as well, I guess you could say. The reason this is really good into Trap Trick is most of the time, Trap Trick is also not necessarily gonna be setting five cards. Usually with their turn one combos, they're gonna be setting one or two at most. And then obviously like when their Sarah activates and all that stuff activates, then they're gonna start setting up three, four, five back row. But the really cool thing about this deck is if you just go Cosmic Cyclone or you go Lightning Storm to start your turn and you get rid of a trap card, then they don't have a trap card to activate, which means that Sarah won't get its effect and all that stuff. You know, it kind of adds up. That deck snowballs and these cards over here make it so that you can't snowball with that deck, right? And then we're playing uh, two Ragekis. Uh, I guess, I guess this could be more back row hate, but I like the front row hate. This is really good into Flawanderies and I hate that deck, so. Uh... Yeah, these and these are really good into flu, so that's why I'm playing that. I think five is pretty good, uh, especially in the main deck, we have the Kaijus as well, so I think this is not bad. And then we're playing, uh, lastly, just if you're forced to go first, or if your opponent makes you go first, uh, that can be troublesome. Even though you do have combos, like you can end on Baguska Equimax, which is still really good, but you know, it just helps when you can set up a D barrier against something like Branded or against something like Koshtra, you call it Xyz, it becomes a little bit tougher for them. And then we're playing three Judgment, of course, just generic good going first card that's just insanely powerful. And then because we're playing the Parallel Exceed, I'm actually playing one Grave Diggers as well as one Reflesia. This is kind of like your combo where if you're forced to go first with Exceed, you can uh, start 
start your combo off with this so you don't lose the cards like Nibiru. But in general, like this package is not bad against a lot of other different decks, right? So that's why I just like playing these. These were the last two cards in the side deck. But yeah, that's it for the deck profile. Um, yeah, Locals is gonna start soon. And um, first place. This is a first place deck. Profile. This is going to be a first place deck profile. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, Crusadia is definitely a different deck. It's a deck that I haven't played in a while, but I love playing this deck. I always like re like revisiting it. Uh, I know the Brave package, the Adventure package is another way to play it, but I really just want to try playing this OTK build where you're just really focused on breaking your opponent's boards and going for game. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Alpha, thank you for recording. I appreciate you. Um, and I guess with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.